That's right, this is Scientology's brand new Superpowers building at Clearwater in Florida. The opening attracted only a fraction of the 10,000 expected and this sign suggests some of the onlookers included extras to make the crowd look bigger. Believe it or not, it's just me. COB was furious. Furious? Yes. Is this about the two bitter defract apostates who flew over in the helicopter? The helicopter. The noise. Danny Sherman spent weeks, months of his life mm. working out a one-hour speech. It was cut down to five minutes because of disruption. That was terrible. You know how much COB loves to hear himself speak. I can imagine his upset at this. Now, you'd ask me about being able to close airspace for future yes. events? Yes, airspace needs to be protected. Well, COB is equivalent to a head of state. Uh, yes, he is, religiously. But in America, you can only close airspace for the president or the vice president of the United States. Can you get them at your next functions? Mm, maybe we can send Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Get the president to attend. I mean, they, they've been to the State Department and done all kinds of things. True. Travolta and Tom Cruise. I bet they could get the president to attend. I think they could because any politician wants the prestige of being associated with the Church of Scientology. It's a real feather in one's cap if you're elected. Did I you think. see that picture of Tom Cruise and Kelly Preston and John Travolta right in front? They looked great. Sitting by Monique Yingling? Yes. And Maurice? Oh, yes. Oh, what a photo ops. Even great the Daily PR. Mail showed that. Now imagine if the president were there. See, you have to get the president there because our only other alternative to closing airspace is to use World War II barrage balloons, which wouldn't look so good. Mm. Or build a dome. But let's work on getting the president there. That's a great idea. Now, there was a lot of goodness to superpower. Tell me. A lot of goodness. Yes. It was the most expensive uninhabited building in the world. Oh, true. And it gave this incredible idea to milk the locals for money for a building. Oh, agreed. Did yes. you know that all ideal orcs are just following the pattern of superpower? Get this magnificent structure in your city. So they're the most profitable empty buildings in the world. There's a bit of rah-rah on the web. Yeah. Because the locals believe that the local church is going to own the orc. Doesn't the local church who raises no. them? No. They don't it's know owned by Church of Scientology International. Oh. In landlord office. Right. And, and they have to pay weekly, right off the top, to rent it back. Oh, so the local parishioners buy the building, give it to the church, and then rent it back. They have the illusion ah. that the locals will own it. Not true. What a great it's a way. It's a rent scam. Yeah, great way to raise money. You know that Miss Cabbage actually studied the McDonald's franchise. You know that they make more money off renting and doing this formula than even burgers? I didn't know that. Mm. Miss Cabbage studied the successful actions of McDonald's burgers. So buying the ideal orgs is buying rent. Oh. Actually getting the local busy workers to give them rent every week for well, the coffers. Yeah, I would like to do that. I would like to buy a property, or actually rather have someone buy me a property, and then I could rent it back to them. I should be a church. You know, with all our wealth and all our untold assets, Yes. The internet is buzzing that we do not even have toilet paper in orbs. The idea of orbs, the strategy is to buy the most magnificent, yes. most square footage 
in a town. A bit of building. Doesn't always work out. You know? Well, do you know what happened with Portland? No, I don't. What happened? $5.38 million. Right. Kicked out existing tenants. Okay. Lay empty for two years. Mm -hmm. Then decided not big enough to build a chapel. Okay. It's been on the market now for a while. No buyers. Oh, that's the building you're selling at a $1.3 million loss. Yes. But did, you bought another one in open Portland, right? Yes. Well, who cares if there's a $1.3 million loss? It's the locals that are, sure. are funding yeah. these ideologues. Yeah, that's okay. the risk of being a parishioner in the Church of Scientology. The but risk? It, well, I mean, management reserves the right to change its mind. Just because you buy a building doesn't mean your parishioners have any rights to think you'll keep it. You might flip it, sell it. Do you know what they did in Seattle? No. We taught those big, heavy mega donors a lesson. Yes. A couple of them gave mega bucks for the new ideal Seattle Oak. Yeah. And then we found out they were on the internet. Oh. Talking to apostates. Mm, yeah. And they were expelled and not allowed to come to the ideal Oak opening. No, they shouldn't have been. You don't want these kind of bitter defrocked apostates and ideal orcs. Well, we and you keep give their money. Mega bucks. Oh, we keep the money. Keep their money. We yeah. believe in keeping the money. Always. No refunds. No refunds. I wrote that part of the contract, by the way. Mm. No refunds. Working closely with COB, we tightly engineered it so that they'll never get their money back. <laughs> get this. This is the funny part between you and I. The church has this so called arbitration process. A joke. Complete joke. They'll never get their money back. It's an inside job, isn't it? No, it's just a legal ecclesiastical procedure that might take you 15 or 20 years. Mm. We like to just stall them until the statute of limitations or on refunds. What we do is promise them if they're good and don't post on the internet, they might get a refund. So we like to lead them along. I think it's genius. It's brilliant. The courts don't want to interfere with ecclesiastical. See, we, we call it religious. Yes. They have to follow a religious procedure to get a refund. And see, that's genius. Where, it is, and that's why you're paying us the big dollars as your attorneys. We take care of the bottom line. Yes, for $1,000 an hour, you have to earn your pay, Stuart. Glad to do it.